Oh, we are in the last week of Women's History Month and Cheetah, we are Space City after all. Oh, you know it, and there are a lot of women playing a big role inside NASA. I spoke with a woman who worked for NASA for decades about her time in space and the future for women in that industry. Mission and lift off of Columbia. I think it's human nature to explore. That's Katie Coleman, yeah, a them. retired astronaut and Air Force Colonel. Initiating RPM. She rode the space shuttle into orbit twice and logged thousands of hours aboard the International Space Station during her nearly quarter century with NASA. I know it seems like ancient, but to me it seems Ooh. like yesterday. It was like, and it was such a whole new world for me. Houston, you're a go for you me. might also remember her as the astronaut, the first duet between Earth and space with Jethro Tull. <laughs> Katie is a guest speaker and commentator. This is one of A robotics expert and engineer, a scientist hoping to inspire the next generation of women in space. You know, being part of such an important mission where, I mean, and there's, there's lots of missions, but it's all part of a big mission. Over the last half century years, NASA's opportunities for women have improved, but Katie says maybe not fast enough. Well, truthfully, it's evolved more slowly than I would like. I mean, I think that there are still fewer women astronauts. You're welcome. It sort of sticks out when you're one of the women. I think it still means that you need to make sure you are really on your game because you're just plain old more visible. They're back from the moon. What would the world look like today if the Apollo program had included women? If when we originally landed on the moon, it had been a woman and a man, how would women and girls feel? All of it would be different. Mary Bear with Space Center Houston explained why representation for women in space really matters. We've had 65 women in space and we're at, that's at 11%. But I'm so excited when we're looking forward to the future, we're going to put the first woman and the next man on the moon. So that to me inspires this next generation. So how can we encourage girls of the next generation who are interested in space? You know, if something in you calls you to space, you know, that's a voice that you hear and you should listen because everybody has a place there and you have some things to accomplish there too. Here in Houston, we call ourselves Space City. We are so blessed to have Space Center Houston in our backyard with daily tours and camps to inspire the young minds of the next generation of explorers and maybe a future female trailblazer like Katie Coleman. Katie is so cool. She's so inspiring. And if you want to hear more from her, she actually just launched a podcast on Slate. She's the co-host of Mission Interplanetary, looking at life in space beyond Earth. You can listen on Apple Podcasts. And guys, she's just incredible. She really is. From her background here in Houston and to uh, what she's doing now to inspire the next generation, it was really interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely going to listen to that. And I love what she said yeah. about and what they said about, you know, how different it would look today if a woman had landed on the moon, too. And I love Love that going forward that's the kind of future we're gonna have it agreed agreed yes, all the girls inspiring. out there in the stem programs uh, continue to stay <laughs> busy out there well 